I think that love is the facilitator of non-transactional interaction. When you are um, observing your own purposes, some of these purposes go beyond your ego. They go beyond the, the particular organism that you are and your local interests. That's what you mean by non-transactional. Yes. So basically, when you are acting in a transactional way, it means that you are respecting something in return for you from the one that you're interacting with. Right, you are interacting with a random stranger, you buy something from them on eBay, you expect a fair value for the money that you send them and sure. vice versa. Because you don't know that person, you don't have any kind of relationship to them. But when you know this person a little bit better and you know the situation that they're in, and you understand what they try to achieve in their life and you uh, approve because you, you realize that they're in some sense serving the same human sacredness as you are. And they need the thing that you have. Maybe you give it to them as a present. But... The, I mean, the feeling itself of joy is a kind of benefit. Yes, but the joy is not the point. The joy is the signal that you get. It's the reinforcement signal that your brain sends to you because you are acting on the incentives of the agent that you're part of. We are meant to be part of something larger. Right. This is the way in which we outcompeted other hominids. <laughs> uh, take that, Neanderthals. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. And also other humans. Uh Right, yeah. There was a population bottleneck uh, for human society that uh, leads to an extreme lack of genetic diversity among humans. If you mm -hmm. look at uh, Bushmen uh, in the Kalahari, that uh, basically tribes that are not that far distant to each other have more genetic diversity than exists between uh, Europeans and Chinese. Mm. And it's because basically the out of Africa population uh, at some point had a bottleneck of just a few thousand individuals. And uh, what probably happened is not that at any time the number of people shrunk below a few hundred thousand. What probably happened is that there was a small group that had a decisive mutation that produced an advantage. And this group multiplied and killed everybody else. Mm -hmm. And we are descendants of that group. Yeah, I, I wonder what uh, the, 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 the peculiar characteristics of that group So I suspect what eventually made a big difference was the ability to organize at scale people to pro program each other with ideas that we became programmable that we are willing to work in lockstep that we went below uh, be above the tribal level that we no longer were yeah. groups of a few hundred individuals and uh, acted on direct reputation systems transactionally but that we basically evolved an adaptation to become state building yeah To, 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 to form collectives outside of uh, the direct collectives. Yes, and that's basically f a part of us became committed to serving something outside Bigger than of ourselves. what we know. Yeah, then that, that's kind of what love is. And it's terrifying because it meant that we eradicated the others. Right? We, it's a force. Yeah. It's an adaptive force that gets us ahead in evolution, which means we displace something else that doesn't have that. Oh, so we had to murder a lot of people that weren't about love. So love led to destruction. They didn't have the same strong love as we did. <laughs> right? That's why I, I mentioned this thing with fascism. When you see this, uh, th these speeches, <laughs> do you want total war? And everybody says, yes, right? Uh. This is this big, uh, oh my God, we are part of something that is more important than me that gives meaning to my existence. <laughs> Fair enough.